So let's be real. Teaching abstinence does not work. And the sex ed that we receive within our school systems is laughable if we get any at all. So today I want to teach you about understanding your own body, understanding your own menstrual cycles, what to track, what is it that you're looking for, what is safe, when to test. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jenny Lay. I'm a family medicine physician and mom of two. And today we're going to teach you how to not get pregnant. And you boys and men out there, listen up because honestly, it takes two to tango. So let's get started. First off, we're just going to talk about hormones, the thing that is raging in your body. And it's actually a very complicated system of hormones and different organs that causes you to ovulate and menstruate each month. So there are hormones within your brain that talk to the ovaries that tell the ovaries to mature and to release an egg each month. And the ovaries itself produce hormones that talk back to the brain and talk to the uterus, which creates the uterus to have an increase in the lining or stabilizing of that lining or shedding of that lining. So it's two different systems there. If you are a medical student or anyone within healthcare trying to learn like the pathophysiology of the menstrual cycle, this is not the video for you. This is just the basics and I'm going to be skipping a lot of things. But basically what is happening is that there is an increase in estrogen from the ovaries, which talks to the brain that gives you a surge of LH, which causes then the follicle to release the egg and which we call ovulation. That egg needs to be fertilized within 12 to 24 hours for it to be viable or else it will just degrade and break down and then it's gone. So no pregnancy occurs. So you might be thinking, man, that seems simple. Avoid getting pregnant by avoiding sex in 12 to 24 hours. Man, that actually seems really hard to become pregnant then, right? I would say yes and no. A lot of people struggle with infertility, but remember that the sperm actually is able to stay alive within the uterus for three to five days. And so if spermy is already there waiting for you, when that egg drops, then bam, you can become pregnant. So one of the ways that we can prevent pregnancy is understanding our menstrual cycles, understanding when we ovulate and avoiding those risky timeframes for having unprotected sex. So there are a lot of different apps that you can use on your phone that are free. You just input your information. When is the first day of your last period? How long did it last? When did the next one come? The more information you have, the better it is for the app to predict. But it is easier to predict if you have regular cycles, which means they come regularly at around the same time. It's easier to predict ovulation then. For my people who have irregular periods, don't worry, the next section I'll talk about how to still track. Usually what happens is that ovulation happens around the middle of your cycle and your cycle starts on the first day you start bleeding so the last menstrual period day the first day so say you start your period that counts as day one it doesn't matter if you bleed for five days doesn't matter if you bleed for seven days or three days so that first day is when your cycle starts and if you're on a 28 day cycle around day 14 is when we think that you will have ovulation obviously this is not 100%. And so there are other things that people track to if they really want to go the natural family planning route. So there are other changes that happen in your body as well, such as basal temperature and the consistency of your discharge. But this requires you to track every single day. So your basal temperature tends to increase by about half a degree Fahrenheit during the time of ovulation and the vaginal discharge becomes more viscous. And what that means is uh, the thickness of it. So imagine water is not viscous, it's very runny and honey is more viscous, it's thicker. And if you, <laughs> I keep going like this, 
but if you pull your fingers apart you see like strings the increased viscosity actually creates channels so it is easier for the sperm to swim up there yeah um, which makes sense so not all of us have the mental capacity to do those things every single day because you need to know what your baseline is for you to recognize when your body has changed but if you are able to track all three of those your periods your basal temperature and your cervical mucus then you're able to see more accurately when that ovulation occurs another way which is um, a little bit easier but still requires you to track is buying ovulation strips um, i found some on amazon where it's like 50 ovulation strips and 20 pregnancy tests for about 15 to 16 dollars so remember i said earlier in the video that surge in hormone that causes you to release an egg that hormone is called lh so we are checking for that surge when you are using ovulation strips so with this every morning you would just pee on the strip and see when you have that surge and when ovulation has occurred rule of thumb the easiest way is that use protection prior to that surge because sperm can stay alive within the uterus anywhere from three to five days and then after 24 hours after you have that surge it is much safer to have unprotected sex because there is no egg to be fertilized there it's really hard to time if you have unprotected sex beforehand because as i said sperm can stay alive and then the egg drops and it is already there to be fertilized um, but if you continue to track all the time it will give you a better understanding of when that ovulation occurs so i know that we are all not perfect and occasionally things can happen like the condom can break you miscalculated what are some of the things that you can do then plan b is available over the counter if you're already pregnant it does not prevent the pregnancy from progressing but if you are not pregnant as of yet, the plan B helps you not ovulate. And that's what it does. So the surge in progesterone hormone prevents you from having that LH surge from releasing an egg. So it is best if you are able to take it as soon as possible after unprotected sex and up to 72 hours after unprotected sex. But you can find this over the counter, you don't need a prescription. You can also talk to your physician or at Planned Parenthood, they can all provide this for you. Remember that the only way to protect against sexually transmitted infections is using some sort of barrier such as condoms. So now that you know the first day of your missed period is actually only two weeks from when that egg was fertilized, but in medicine, we call that four weeks gestation. So we consider you four weeks pregnant, even though the egg was only fertilized for two weeks, sometimes even less if your cycles are shorter. So at six weeks, your egg has only been fertilized for four weeks. So for those of you who are in states where you need to understand when you're pregnant earlier, I recommend taking a pregnancy test every four to five weeks just regularly. So I recommend getting the ones on Amazon or where you can get it in bulk where it's just the strips or even from Dollar Tree. They are all the same. They are looking for the same hormone. So they're the same as the ones that the $14 ones where you get two in a pack or one in a pack at like Target or something like that. So save your money. It's the exact same ones that we use within the doctor's clinic. Ultimately, I think that knowledge and knowing your own body and education is really important for you to decide what kind of life that you want. I know that I'm very privileged to have this education, to have access to contraception in order to basically create the life that I wanted. Um, I decided to start a family while I was in medical school and then again when I was in residency but if I didn't have that option, if I were to get pregnant in college or something like that, then I know that this is not the life that I would have. So I am very thankful. A common misconception is that 
birth control pills causes infertility when it does not. It is very, very safe. I had personally taken birth control pills for almost 14 years consecutively and became pregnant within the first few months of stopping birth control. We actually give people birth control when they are trying to become pregnant to regulate their cycles because it's more likely that that first cycle when they stop birth control is when they will ovulate. And so there's very there's this very common misconception about birth control. If you are interested in that, I know I didn't talk about it in this video, but I have made another video talking about all the different types of birth control. I'll link it in the description box or right here. So that's all I had for this video. I know that information teaching women about their own bodies and sexual education tends to be suppressed by social media and YouTube. So please, if you had enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please like and share it with anyone who you think it will help. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm or to push it out to more viewers. If you haven't already, please subscribe and join the family. We put out new videos at least once a week. Also on Mondays, we try to do Medical Mondays where I answer all your medically related questions, your non-medical related questions, and everything else in between. So set the notification and you wouldn't miss a video. All right, peace and I'll see you next week.